Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about examples of loops and how they can be used to solve real problems. So we know a loop does a section of code over and over again, usually with some limit, and the same principle of scoping applies. This int i variable will only be allowed in this part of the loop. It cannot go outside of the loop as well. So scoping applies because we have a set of curly braces as well. So that's one important thing to remember. Loops can get pretty complicated. So let's start off with a simple practical application for loops. One simple practical application of loops is, let's say we want to add up the numbers from 1 through 10. If we want to add up numbers, the process that we're going to repeat over and over is going to be addition. So now the question comes is when we want to display the addition, well first let's, let's think of how we want to do this. We will have a loop. For this example, I'll use a for loop. We have for int i equals, we want to add up the numbers from 1 through 10. So let's start with 1, int i equals 1. And we want to go up to 10. So we want to go i less than or equal to 10. And we want to increment by 1 every time because we want to add up every number from 1 through 10. So we want to do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way up to 10. So we are going to increment our loop by 1, so i++. So that's the thought behind how we want to add up the numbers from 1 through 10. We want something to go from 1 to 10 because those are the numbers we are adding. Now, what do we want to do after that? We want to sum up all the numbers. So in order to sum up the numbers, we're going to need a variable to sum it up. Well, let's just say int sum. But right now, the int sum is inside the loop. Do we want it inside or outside of the loop? Well, first let's let's have it inside the loop and see what we see what happens. If we have sum and then we want to have it equal to i, but we want it to also add up what we've already added up. And what did we already add up? Well, that's the sum. Sum equals sum plus i. Well, i doesn't really have a starting place. So let's just say it equals zero. Because if we sum up some number of numbers, then if we don't sum any numbers at all, then our sum is zero. There is no sum. So we want our sum to start at zero, and we want to add i to it, because we want to do plus one, plus two, plus three, all the way up to plus ten. So we have sum equals sum plus i, because we, let's say we're like at one plus two, so we have one, plus 2, and then we want to do plus 3. So we want to take the value of 1 plus 2 and then add that to plus 3. So maybe we'll have like 1 plus 2, and then that will get stored into the sum variable. Then we'll want to redefine the sum equals sum plus 3. So then this is the same thing as 1 plus 2 plus 3 because the 1 plus 2 was the sum and remember when we're reassigning variables you want to go from left or from right to left to make it easier so replace this sum with the 1 plus 2 from before so this sum becomes the 1 plus 2 from before so then our new value would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 so that's kind of the thought process that we want inside the loop. But if we're going to print after we exit the loop, we're going to want to print out system.out.printf. Our, uh, we want to print out our sum. Uh, well, our sum is now outside the scope because it's bounded by these curly braces. So maybe we want to move this uh, outside of the loop. We'll put this over here, int sum equals zero. So now the sum variable is inside these curly braces, so we can still use the sum here. We have our sum out here, 
so we can print it outside of the loop. But let's see if the part inside the loop is correct. If we have sum equals zero, so then we're going to have zero plus one, which will give us one. And then we'll have, well, it'll say int i equals one, and then we'll go inside the loop. So sum will be zero plus one. That means the first, the first one will be one because so far we've only gotten one. Let's write this out. Maybe that'll make it easier. So the first time we have i equals one, and then the value will be sum equals sum plus i, which is zero plus one. So that would be one. Now when i equals two, we'll have sum equals sum plus i, which is the previous sum, which was one from previous, so one, and then plus, what's our i? Over here, our i equals two, so we'll put a two here. So one plus two is three. And then when i equals three, sum equals sum plus i that is the previous sum that we calculated before which was three three plus and then our i which is right here i equals three three plus three which is six and we can keep incrementing this until we reach the condition i is less than or equal to 10. So we'll eventually have a few more iterations. Then we'll get to i equals nine, and then we'll say sum equals sum plus i. Well, this will equal the sum from previous plus our i, which is nine, which will give us the, the new sum. I'll just call it new sum here. So then when i equals 10, is 10 less than or equal to 10? It is, so it'll do it one more time. So we'll go inside the loop and say sum equals the previous sum plus i, which is going to be the sum from previous and when I say sum from previous, I mean uh, the sum from nine, this one. I'll, I'll just call this sum from i equals nine. And instead of saying sum from previous, I'll say sum from i equals eight to make it more clear. So, and even this uh, previous sum, I'll call it a uh, sum from i equals nine. So plus i, well, that'll be sum from i equals nine plus, and our i right now is 10. So we'll just add the 10. And then we'll get some, some other new sum. And then we get i equals 11. Then we check, is 11 less than or equal to 10? No. Then we will come out of this part, and then we will print this. So it looks like we have one, two, three, and then we go all the way to 10. And then when it gets to 11, we stop. So it, it looks like we're on the right track. It looks like we have correctly made a program that will print out the sum of numbers between one and 10. And we start off the sum at zero because if we don't add any numbers together, then our sum is zero. So it's only when, like, suppose this for loop didn't exist. If this for loop didn't exist, would you print out zero? Well, yes, because there we didn't add any numbers. So if you don't add any numbers, then it's zero. If we just added one number, if, if we just said instead of 10, if we just added the first number, is one less than equal to one? Yes. So then we do sum equals sum plus one. Well, that's zero plus, the sum is zero right now, zero plus one. So if we 
print out just one number, if we just want the sum from 1 to 1, well then that's just 1, because it, we added the i. So this makes sense for not adding any numbers, for adding just one number. And then if we add up the first two numbers, first two numbers, i equals 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then that makes sense too. And then same for 3. Well, instead of writing this 3 here, it could be 1 plus 2 plus 3. And that gives us the addition of the first three numbers, and so on and so forth up until 10. So we have... Uh, let's change this back to a 10 before we forget. And so now we have the int i equals 1, i less than equal to 10, i plus plus. So we are going from i equals 1 to i equals 10, and we're adding up every number in between. We're not skipping any numbers. Sum equals sum plus i, and we wrote this little table here to show that it actually works, and then we are printing out the sum here. And the reason we have the sum outside the for loop is so that we keep it in the outer scope. We don't want it to be in the inner scope, otherwise we wouldn't be able to print it out here, outside of the loop. So let's run it and see what happens. We get 55, and if you pull out a calculator and add up 1 through 10, you should get 55. Now, if, if we want to really make sure that we did it properly, we can also put print statements inside the for loop. System.out.print.printf. We can say uh, i equals percent %d, and then we can print out our i. So when we enter the loop, we will see our i count, and then we can also do the sum. So we enter the loop and see what is the value of i, then we do the sum, and then we can see system.out.printf sum after adding up i equals, and then we can see sum. So first, we're going to see the value of i, then we're going to calculate the new sum, and then we are going to see the value of the sum after it's been calculated. So if we run this, then we will see i equals 1, sum after adding up i is 1. That makes sense because we went through it the first time, so it's 0 plus 1. And then when i equals 2, sum after adding up i is 3, 1 plus 2 is 3. Then 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 after the third one. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10. And we can just see 6 plus 4 over here is 10. And then 10 plus 10 plus 5 is 15, because we're taking the previous sum and adding. Then 15 plus 6 is 21. And then 21 plus 7 is 28. 28 plus 8 is 36. 36 plus 9 is 45. And 45 plus 10 is 55. That's how we add up numbers. Even if we had to do this on paper, we would first add up 1, 2, and then get that, and then 2, and then 1, 2, and 3. Well, we'd take what the 1 and 2 was and then add that to 3. So this is exactly how we did it over here. We just took 1 and had 1, then added to 2, get 3, then added to 3, get 6, and then 4. So we added up 1 by 1 by 1. And that's how we would do it on paper. So this is the Java program for summing up the numbers from 1 through 10. If we remove these, then those were just to make sure that we were seeing the process. But this is the actual program, and these comments are just helping us to understand whether or not our thought process was correct. And for any type of loop problem, it is very useful to make a table like this. Maybe instead of even doing, you can say like, we have the i counter here, and then we will say the old sum, and then maybe we can even have a column for the new sum, like that. Maybe we can even make a table like this. So when i equals 1, our old sum was 0, and then we can say our new sum is 1, and then maybe our old sum was 1, 
because our old sum was one from over here like our new sum becomes our old sum in the next one and then over here our new sum is three so when i equals three our old sum is going to be three and then our new sum is going to be six and then over here well we don't really know what our old sum is we'd have to fill in all the blanks and everything but uh from our uh our program down here we know that after eight our sum becomes 36 so our old sum would now be 36 and then our new sum at nine well we know over here after i equals nine the sum after adding up i is 45 so we would know that this is 45 so then 45 would be our old sum over here and then our new sum after adding 10 would be 55 right here we can we can see that it's 55 at adding it up and then this last 55 came from this last statement i erased the parts in the middle but this this 55 came from that last part these tables are going to be your friend when you're working through loop problems. It's very common that when you're starting out doing looping problems that you'll be creating tables like these to better understand what's going on in the loop. Because when I was starting to learn computer science, I thought loops were very confusing. It seems kind of weird for me to sum up, like reassign the variable to sum it up. This is why I did the reassignment video previously to show that this is how reassignment works, but now you're doing reassignment multiple times. So it, it's very important to understand variable reassignment before you get into loops. So this is a very simple example of looping, and in the next video we will try a slightly more complex problem. But for now, if you want to just mess around with other numbers, you can do that as well. Maybe we want to... Well, right now we have 4i equals 1 to 10, and that gives us 55. I'll erase this comment section to keep it all visible. But maybe, now that we know that this works, maybe we want to see what's the sum from 1 to 100. Well, let's, let's see what that gives us. 50-50. That, that is the sum from 1 to 100. You can play around with this. Maybe instead of 100, we want to see 1,000. 500-500 or 500-500. So we can just play around with this. Now we can sum any number. Maybe we don't want to start at 1. Maybe we want to start at 50 to 100. If we want to go from 50 to 100, then the sum of that is 38-25. So you can just change your numbers around and see what the, what the sums are. In the next video, we'll talk about a different loop problem.